Well, what's going on, folks? Welcome back, or maybe I should be—maybe you should be welcoming me back. Uh, <laughs> this video is going to be a little bit different from the usual. At least it's a video. I haven't been putting any videos down hardly at all lately, but at least this is going to be one. And like I say, it's a lot different. Doesn't mean I'm resorting to this all the time, videos uh, like this, because I'm not. Uh, this is just a uh, trial thing to see how it does. I was going to put this video on Patreon only. And then I remembered there's a segment in here for uh, Billy at Picker's Grip. If you've not tried Picker's Grip, you need to try it. Uh, there's a segment in this video, a short one about it. I just gave him a shout out. Picker'sGrip.com. Go there, check his products out. I'm sure you'll like them. Anyway, the segment will be in here later. Uh... How y'all been doing, man? Uh, like I said, I was going to put this is going to be a Patreon-only video, and then I remember doing that, so I, I'm going to probably have to let it go on YouTube this time. But the patrons will see it long before it goes on YouTube. I've been working on my grandson's banjo. Check this out, man. This is one of the buttons off of the second string. If I can hold it up there in a way you can see it. One of the buttons off of the second string. And it split. And the way it works is. I glued it back together once and it didn't hold. Anyways, the way it works. He, he, you can't even play the banjo without this right here, man. Most banjos, you can take the button off. Well, no, I guess not most of them. But a lot of them, you can take the button completely off. And the banjo will stay in tune. Well, this one, the way it works, it's got a small, like an O-ring, you know, flat rubber washer. The button seats up against that, and then the O-ring, you know, against the outer shell of the tuner. And by tightening the screw that goes in the end of it, I've got it here too, shoves the button against that o-ring and creates a drag so you know when you tighten the tune the string up to pitch it's a second string I, I think i said that to b string anyways it works kind of like a brake or a clutch you know the tighter you tighten the screw up the harder it's going to be to turn you know the tune but you have to have it tight enough you know for that rubber to work like a brake and when you t tune it up it stay there you know what i mean I hope that makes sense i don't, I don't know if I'm probably not understanding that very well. You would think Gold Tone would make these out of pearl or something besides plastic, man. I mean, there's not all that much force on it, but there you go. They do break. You could tighten the screw too tight and break them that way, you know. Or mother of pearl or, or something besides plastic, anything besides plastic. I'm gonna try. I tried gluing it together, and it was it came apart when I was trying to put it on the banjo. So I think I want to try since it, since it is plastic, to just melt it together. You know what I mean? Get it hot enough, and right where it came apart. Maybe you can see that there. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's a clean break, and it's an even break. And when I put the two pieces back together, man, they are. You can't even feel where, where it broke at. You can probably see on this side of it. I'm going to get some light on it. I think the camera's focusing on me and not it. It's got two cracks in this one side and one crack in the other. So I, I think fixing that, the best method for fixing that would be melting it back together and then you can still want to see the cracks, but at least, you know, be better than risking it with glue, I think. Super glue probably would hold it, because like I say, there's not all that much force on it. But, I don't know. I don't know exactly which way I'll go with it yet. I do know I'm going to have to wait till tomorrow, though, because I can't see, man, when it gets dark like this. I don't have good lighting in here anyway. And I usually don't work on instruments in here. But, uh, like I say, this video is, is completely different, man. I got up uh, the other night, 3 a.m., uh, something woke me up. 
So I got up and thought it was a noise. It was outside and it was ungodly loud, man. It was unbelievably loud. I thought, what is that? It woke me up. I had the TV on and I fell asleep. And at 3 a.m., it was louder than the TV. I mean, you couldn't even talk over it. Outside, you couldn't. You couldn't in here. But even hearing it in here, as well as this place is insulated, I mean, you know, it's hard to hear anything outside. People used to come here and they'd pull up in the driveway and I'd never hear a man until he knocked on the door. But I could hear this. I mean, it was shaking the floor. And I got some video of it. Here it is, a little bit of video of it. What is that? So you can see, you can imagine, only imagine how loud that was. <laughs> and then uh, here's another video. Uh, keep on me. We're still batching it. We're still womanless. <laughs> uh, the way the man said a couple weeks or so ago, it's been, we're just going to have a really cold night. And I hadn't built a fire in our wood stove and probably... 10 years at least, a good 10 years. So I thought, you know, I used to go hunting, come in and be frozen to death and been out in the woods all day. And uh, boy, it wasn't nothing better, man, than sitting down in the recliner and leaning back and just absorbing that heat from the wood, wood stove or coal. I burn coal in it too. But I only used that as a backup, you know. Uh, some winters way back, I used to use it as heat with the furnace we got a gas furnace anyway here's some video of the uh, of us building a fire and some of that other things going on all righty folks today's february 29th 2024 it's leap year yes <laughs> 29 days in february every four years and i'm getting ready to build a fire be the first one in 10 years. First fire I've built in 10 years. The reason I remember that is because I lost a good friend 10 years ago. Mike Mullins is his name. You can search uh, the coffee tapes or coal loading Johnny. On my bigger channel, not the little one, the big one, bigger one. And you'll find my son and me jamming with Mike. He died in June of 2014, and I haven't had a fire built since then. I, it's, I don't know why I remember that, but I do remember it. We got a gas. We heat the place with gas. There you can see the gas heater, one gas heater. We have a gas furnace. And I want to use this uh, this stove for backup. You know, just for backup, that's all. And like I say, I haven't had a fire built in it for 10 years. And uh, it's 40 degrees outside right now. I'm supposed to get down to 20 tonight. So I thought, what the hell? I'm going to build a fire for a change. You can hear it. You can hear it drawing there. I'm going to shut that so it'll make more heat. And, uh... So that's what's going on at the house that never sleeps, building a fire for the first time in 10 years. Like I say, I want to use this for backup. It's a wood and coal stove. Burns wood or coal. And I've got coal right there and wood right there. Uh, if you want to know what's on the bench, these are PA monitors right here. PV monitors. We use those in Wolf Creek quite a bit. And uh, plenty of instruments to work on. Guitars all over the place. And right here you can see let me get some lights. This is my old uh, Dan Tominski Martin guitar D28 HD28 I enlarged the sound hole, as you can see. 
Uh, this guitar's been down for three years, man. I uh, redid the frets, done all the frets, replaced all the frets new in it. I made a new tusk nut. How many notes are you going to be playing open? Well, if you're a banjo player, you play a lot of open notes. <laughs> as many as you can. Uh, same goes for the guitar, really, as far as my playing goes. Anyways, this guitar been down for three years. Uh, I forget what all I did. I, I I replaced all the frets. It's got brand new frets in it. They are done. They're finished. Made the nut. I still got to fit it and set the nut action and all that jazz. And I'm going to do that real soon because, like I say, it's been down for three years. The guitar ain't been played for three years. It's got a nice Fishman, uh, which I'm going to review that one day. You can't see it, but maybe you can see it a little bit there. A nice Fishman uh, pickup in it. It's got a condenser mic right there on the gooseneck, you can see. Plus, it's got a, 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 a piezo under the saddle pick up plugs in back here right there and that you know i hear a lot about these other pickups being so good man i've tried them all and when i bought this one right here it's expensive don't get me wrong it costs some bucks but when i bought that one right there i was done shopping man i mean that pickup does it for me it sounds like a true acoustic guitar None of this uh, funky sounding shit you get from most under saddle pickups. Piezo pickups that go under the saddle. They're, they're all of them I've ever heard. The guitar just don't sound right. I gotta get back over here and check the fire, man. Hold on. <laughs> the guitar's all over the goddamn place. Look at this. Look at this, man. Look. I mean, they are everywhere. There's boxes of guitars right there that came in the mail. People waiting to have their guitar fixed. Oh, I feel heat coming off that already. Yeah, man. It's getting warm. Just button it up here a little bit. Set the thermostat. First fire built in 10 years in this stove. First fire in 10 years. Like I say, we got a little gas heater over there. And then we heat the place with a gas furnace. And I only use this for backup. But, you know, I used to go out uh, deer hunting and bear hunting and stuff. As you can see on my walls, I was successful at that. And, uh, come in, you know, come back in after hunting all day out in the cold. Come in and just sit down in a chair beside this stove and feel it. That's basically what I wanted to do today. I just wanted to feel the heat, man. Just enjoy it for a change. I used to let this thing light it and burn it for a week or a month. Let it go out and then freeze to death, man. The gas heat is not the same. It is not the same as this wood heat and coal heat is. I don't have a whole lot of wood in here, but I got a lot more outside. Plenty of boxes and junk. And there's my wife's uh, storage place. If you want to call her a wife, she's been gone for a year. Anyways, me and Q-Ball going to build us up a fire today. I need to put a pan of water on that. And I'll get right back to you after I do that. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Here's the moment of truth, folks. I'm sure it's going to have to crank a long time before it starts. And I'll charge that battery. I just hope it's enough. There's a choke. Hold the pedal down.
So I hope you enjoyed those short clips and got at least a smile out of them, anything. Like I say, I, this channel's not going to this all the time. I see so many channels, man, this is all they do. This is all they do. If you look at that one thumbnail, you've pretty much seen every video they make. And they do it with their mouth, as I said in one of the clips. Uh, <laughs> I may have to go to that someday, and my hands are getting so bad. But not yet. You're going to still see a lot of instrument repair here. I should have made a video on fixing that banjo key. I might yet, but I doubt it because I got so much crap to fix. And then you saw like uh, lawn mowers, man. I got three big riding mowers. Three of them. And uh, last summer and the summer before, only one of them was usable. Okay? The big one, I bought a new drive belt from the company that builds the lawnmower and uh, put it on and it wouldn't pull out of its tracks, man. The belt slipped so bad and I knew I put it on there right because I've done this crap all my life. I get my hands all tore up like that and my arms, I don't know if you can see that. You know, thin blood and I just touch something with this old age shit. And uh, there you can see it better, I think. And I'm bruised, you know. Anyways, back to the lawnmower. Ordered a belt from a factory that made the lawnmower. It fit. I put it on myself and it fit. Everything worked. But the lawnmower, like I say, it wouldn't move out of its tracks. It slipped so bad. So I just shoved the thing in the building and jumped on the, uh, the other one that worked. And mowed. And mowed ever since with it. And, uh... You know, I know the one I've been using the last two years, like, it's old, man. It's a, what is that thing? It's a good brand. I can't even think of the name of it. It's a well-known brand. It had front and rear steering, but I fixed the back end so it didn't steer the rear wheels anymore. Because it kept stripping out of gear on the steering, trying to turn all four wheels. If you turn the steering wheel to the left, your front wheels would turn to the left. Rear ones would turn to the right. And you could turn that thing right where it sat, man. But it kept, you know, wearing a craftsman. That's that's the lawnmower I'm top trying to think of. Anyways, I knew it was going to wear out. I used it two years without anything breaking or, you know, not even changing a bell on it. So, me and Cue Ball here, we decided to go get that big one out, the bigger one, and uh, try to find out why that belt's slipping so bad. Brand new belt from a factory. Should not slip like that. So I went up there and made a video of me starting it. Pulled it over into the garage and then today I went back up there and tore it all apart and take the battery back out, the battery box out to get to the belts. There were two of them. And I, I could not see anything wrong. It's got like a, uh, what do they call that thing? It's like a clutch in there. Uh, I can't think, man, what they called it. Now, I looked it up. Well, I can tell you, I got it pulled up right here. I did have. Variable speed pulley. That's what they call it. And I checked everything on it. It seemed like it was okay. It didn't do anything. Never took any of the belts or wheels or pulleys or off. I just looked at them. They looked okay to me. Well, oddly enough, I put it back together and I thought, well, I'm going to see if it'll pull long enough to mow it inside the fence back here where Lily plays. When we let her outside, she stays right there in the fence. She can't run off. I don't think she'd run off anyway, but I figured I'd mow that grass in there. It's a fairly big place. It's all level. So I fired the mower up today and ran it after I put it all back together, ran it down here and kicked the uh, deck in, started mowing the grass in there. Made a couple swerps and all of a sudden, man, it threw me back and it took off. I was in sixth gear because it was slipping so bad that it would just barely move. And something must have been hung up on that clutch or a spring or something in there and let go. It started to work right. <laughs> that little more in sixth gear like that, if you got given it a lot of gas, man, it'd probably run 10 or 15 miles an hour, which is fast on a mower. 
And I was going about that fast, mowing. So I finished mowing inside the fence there. And, uh, I, you know, I could feel right when it happened. I knew it happened. It fixed itself. I didn't do anything to it to make it do that other just take it apart and look at it and put it back together. I really didn't take it apart. I just took the battery out and the battery box and I could see everything. I just checked everything, make sure it was tight, you know. And it was all tight. Everything was right. But something, I'm thinking a spring in there, the way that clutch works, when you push the clutch down with your foot, it shoves the mechanism over. And when you let it out, a spring pulls it back. I think that spring was fouled up some way and wasn't allowing it to, you know, to pull it, pull it back. I don't know, man. I, I just know it works good. As far as I know, the Craftsman, when I parked it last year, it was still working good. So I got two good mowers, working ones. In case one tears up, you know, I can just jump on the other one to finish the job. I had four of them, man. It was just too much, too many. Nobody needs four big tractors like that man that big all they would do is cut grass you know pretty much so how y'all been man I can say cue ball and me we're still womanless here uh, that <laughs> probably by the time you see this video it'll be around March the 20th maybe before some people see it will make a year since she's been gone. She left on March the 20th last year and uh, hasn't came back. So it, that'll make a year. And uh, I told some of you, I didn't tell you all, but I'll tell you all here. It really amazes me how bold women are that know you live alone. <laughs> That's pretty much all I'll say about that. Wow. I could have a woman in here easily, man, tonight. Just pick the phone up and call, and one of several <laughs> that I've wanted to come in. But, yeah, I'm trying to hang on and wait and do the right thing, I guess would be a good way to put it. I've been spending a whole lot of my time right here. Maybe you can see it. You can tell that head's had some time spent on it. That head's been on this banjo for probably 30 years, man. Same head. It's a Remo 11 inch high crown. And it's still good. I tuned that head to A sharp or B flat. You'd think after all these years it would deteriorate, you know, or get rot or crack, bust. It never has yet. It hasn't yet. In fact, I just uh, a week or two ago put on a new set of strings and I checked the head and it had come down to A. So I tightened it up to A sharp, which is where I like them. And I'm a little afraid to go any higher than that. But uh, I'll show you someday what it sounds like if I ever learn to play again. I don't know how many of y'all know it. I, I was Banjo was my main instrument as a kid. My dad started me on the banjo when I was four years old. He, I couldn't even reach the end of the neck. I was so little I couldn't reach it. So he'd prop me up on the bed and put pillows around me. Here, Lily. Here. Here. Right there. There. He propped me up on the bed and put pillows all around me to hold me and the banjo up and put a capo, you know, about halfway up the neck wherever I could reach. And he started showing me stuff. And then I got learning Earl Scruggs stuff. He turned me on to Earl Scruggs. And man, I, it was the war was on then. I had to learn everything that Earl played. And did. <laughs> and then I learned everything Don Reno could play. And then guys like uh, Bela Fleck and Scott Vestal came along. And now uh, known Pacalny. And learned a lot of those guys stuff. I learned almost everything that Bela Fleck plays. Or, or played up to the point I quit. I'd practice. The only reason I'm telling you is because I know some of the people on YouTube don't know this. Some of you on Patreon may not know it. I practiced 
most of the, most days 16 or 18 up to 18 hours per day every day I never missed once in a great great while maybe miss a day but and it was always seven or eight hours six hours but most days I would practice like I don't know 12 15 18 hours even and I started to get worse on it <laughs> this was 30 years ago 34 years ago now so okay so 34 years ago it seemed like the more I practiced, the worse I got. They didn't know what focal dystonia even was back then. I don't know if they knew what rheumatoid arthritis was back then or not. All I knew was something was wrong with my hands. You know, I could feel that. Because you develop a feel when you play the band and practice that much. You just develop a touch and a feel. And when it ain't right, you know it. And I knew it wasn't right. And I kept getting worse and worse and worse. And finally, I just when my dad died, I just said, screw it. Put the banjo in the case, slid it under the bed or in the closet. And I, I never fooled with it anymore. Until two years ago, this, this past December, made two years, I've been playing it again. Attempting to play it again. A bunch of you on YouTube told me to get, uh, get these fingerless, fingertipless gloves and try them. I, I thought, that's silly, man. That's not going to do anything. But I worked on a couple of banjos. One of them was really nice, and I was wishing how much I could play it, you know. So I thought, well, hell yeah, I'll do it. So I went and bought three or four pairs of these, because I'm determined, man, to <laughs> play that bastard again. Uh, I bought three or four pair and put one on one night, brought the banjo in here right here where I'm sitting here right now. Start messing with it. I put my picks on. They're uh, right there. And I don't know, the second or third night I did it like, well I haven't missed a night in two years, two and a half or whatever it's been. I haven't missed a day. But after two or three nights of doing that, I started to develop that feel that I was just talking about. I could just feel that maybe there's something to these finger tipless gloves, you know. So I kept doing it. I've been doing it, let's see, January, February, March. Two years and three months I've been doing it now. And uh, there is something to these. If you have any problems with your hands, if you shake like I do at times, or if you, yeah, let me show you this. I don't know how steady I am now. Not very steady. See that? There's not nothing I can do about that. All right, watch this. But if you, if you have any kind of problems with your hands, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you try these gloves out. Now look. It's still shaking a little bit, but it ain't nearly, nowhere near as bad. Can you see that? It is a little bit. I ain't got the glove really pulled on good, but all the difference in the world in these, man. These are, uh, I forget what the, what the name of them is. Shit, I don't even remember where I got them at. I ordered them online. I do know that. Or maybe it's in, yeah, here. Copper fit. Yeah, I remember now. Copper fit. You can Google them. And like I say, if you have any kind of trouble with your hands, man, you owe it to yourself to try these if you're a musician or anything you have trouble with your hands with. Because they have helped me big time, man. I haven't uh, got, I'll probably never get back on the banjo, you know, to the point I was when I quit when I had to quit but it's coming someday you're going to hear it on this channel I'll show you that uh, you yeah, can still do it <laughs> hopefully hopefully that day's coming it ain't quite there yet but I practice maybe well for the past year since she left I've, I've just been playing like maybe an hour or two hours a day but I've only missed very few days man 
cue ball just got through having her treat party. She has a little treat party every night. I give her treats and a stick with uh, chicken and duck. And I'm not sure exactly what all that stuff is that she likes. I just buy it and give it to her. Uh, you probably saw her. I don't know if you saw her in that lawnmower video or any of the videos outside or not. She's a old gal. I had to take her to the vet a while back. Has a 300 buck trip just to get her checked out. You know, that was all, just to check up. And she got a good clean bill of health. And my last one was a good one too. Everything, you know, good as far as the health goes. And you know the rest. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the next Patreon video will be Patreon only. Like I say, I'll, I'll have to let this one go to YouTube because I put a part in here about PickersGrip.com. So y'all heard me talk about PickersGrip. PickersGrip.com. I've got a couple of items here from the website. Hopefully you can see that okay. There, maybe that's better. If you haven't checked them out, I've been uh, I've been talking about this guy for a long time, a lot of years. He sent me a couple of nice shirts. But PickersGrip.com, Billy, thank you by the way. Thank you very much. Here's the product. Now, obviously, I haven't used this yet, but I have used an older version of his. I assume this is the same, it's just in a different container. But it's, you put it on your pick, you apply this to your pick, and you can't throw the pick down, you can't sling it off, you, I mean it sticks man. This is good stuff, it works. Go to pickersgrip.com, let me make sure here, pretty sure that's it. Pickersgrip.com, yeah. And tell Billy he came from the house that never sleeps. I know he's got a bunch of other people showing his product too. But if you go there from here, tell him he came from the house that never sleeps and you want some Pickard's grit. And uh, I'm telling you, man, it works good. This stuff works wonders. My pick used to turn around in my fingers. It'd turn around on the side, turn around backwards, or I'd drop it. You know, I was playing on stage one time. I had a uh, blue chip pick, and I dropped it, and it went right down between the cracks under the stage, man. And I told the owner there, the guy that was running the place, I said, you know, that board's going to come off of there. I'm going to get that pick, man. I, I'm not going to leave it laid down. Hell, they're like a hundred bucks. Anyways, he let me take the board off, and I got the pick out and saved it, and I still have it. I've got like five of those. Uh, blue chip picks now but this works with any pick man even finger picks i've been getting back into playing banjo i've been doing a lot of that that's a lot of why i haven't been online very much devoting all my time right now makes about two and a half years december made two years i've been working on the banjo every day every day i haven't missed man very few days i've missed not more than five days in those two years, I still can't play the damn thing. Anyways, go to pickersgrip.com. Tell Billy hello, and you want to try his product. And uh, I guarantee you, man, you'll be happy with it. I guarantee you. A lot of y'all tried that and told me you loved it. I tried it, and I love it. I swear, man, put that stuff on your pick and hold your pick. It won't spin around on you. You won't drop it. I don't think you could even sling the pick you know, off of you. I don't believe you could. It's great stuff. Billy, thank you. Uh, you can go to pickersgrip.com. He's got some other products there. And check out everything he has. And uh, pick something up, man. Support him if you can. I'd appreciate it. I'm sure Billy would appreciate it. And tell him you came from the house and never sleeps. <laughs> I don't know how, old this, how long this video is, how old it is. God, old age is catching me fast, man. So I'm going to cut it here. Just I wanted to tell you guys I hadn't forgot about you. And uh, I'm going to off the dry, though. 
apple juice. Cheers. I drank a lot of that stuff, man. My wife bought it for me one day, or she came in here one day and had a great big jug, looked like a gallon or more than that. She said, you like apple juice? I said, I don't know. And I poured me a big glass of it, and wow, I was hooked on that crap and still am and drank it every day since then. <laughs> Try it, man. If you haven't tried it, I, I drank the, uh, is it Mott? Mott? Or Mott? M O. M-O-T-T, -T, I think's the name of it. Good stuff, man. There's another brand she used to get. And it was good to switch between the brands now and then. You know, if you drink as much of it as I do. But, they, yeah, good stuff. Anyways, uh, the channel's not changing to what this video is. We're going back to repairs probably on the next video you see. Because Lord knows i got plenty of that in there to do. That has never stopped, man. Just the videos have slowed down because I needed some time. And I've taken some time now. And I thank you guys that are still here. A lot of people left, man. A lot of people left Patreon. Probably a lot unsubscribed, maybe. But we're going to get back on track. I know I've been saying that for a while. But I've already got instruments here to, to do it, to get started. Well, plenty of them to get started. If you need your instrument worked on, I'm not taking any more right now, right at this time of this video, but I will soon again. So, you know, keep in touch with me, stay tuned, and uh, if you need me to work on your guitar or banjo or whatever, I'm going to try to do it a while longer, even with these. <laughs> or she's, I think she's wanting outside, so I'm going to say cheers to you guys. Thank you, uh, patrons, especially patrons, for keeping it here. I love you guys, and thanks for sticking with me through all this crap that we've been through here. And uh, I'll see you on another video. Repair video, no doubt. Cheers.